In this uh, section, we will talk about the mechanism of breathing. Mechanism of breathing. Now, this process of breathing is actually taking in the air and exhaling the air which is rich in carbon dioxide or what we call the breathing mechanism. So, breathing includes two processes or two steps we can say. Inhalation which is also known as inspiration and exhalation which is also known as expiration. So inhalation is taking in of air and exhalation is uh, releasing that foul air or the air which is rich in carbon dioxide. Inhalation in case of uh, human beings is an active process whereas exhalation is a passive process. This is active process that means muscle contraction ATP is required whereas exhalation or expiration is a passive process that means during this time the muscles are going to relax and that is why there is no ATP or energy requirement. So let us take the processes in detail and see which muscles help in inhalation. There are two inspiratory muscles. One main structure which helps is diaphragm and the muscles associated with diaphragm and the second are external intercoastal muscles muscles now let us first see where these muscles are located and why this kind of uh, musc uh, muscular movement is required we have seen the structure of lungs there is almost negligible musculature in the lung itself and that is why these muscles they are required now what happens is the lungs are tightly packed in the thoracic cavity. They don't have their own musculature which can help in their expansion so that the air can come in. And that is where these muscles help. In the thoracic cavity, we know that on the sides there are ribs and the lower side is the diaphragm. So if we have to understand what exactly is the thoracic cavity it is supported or uh, guarded by the ribs in the front and the lower side that is between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity is a diaphragm this diaphragm is normally dome shaped that is the, it has its curvature the muscles which are attached to the diaphragm they are from the peripheral part going to the ribs and here would be the backbone on the dorsal side so from here going to the backbone so if there is a circular uh, diaphragm a complete ring like thing or a disc like thing all along its periphery there are muscles and these muscles are attached to the side of the diaphragm and the rib cage so the muscles go like this and imagine if this is a sheet, a diaphragm and the muscles are here and if these muscles contract, they're going to pull the diaphragm. So it is going to become flat. So these muscles, they are known as phrenic muscles or radial muscles. These muscles are attached on the peripheral part of the diaphragm, again, we said diaphragm is dome shaped normally and they would be attached all along the periphery of the diaphragm and to the rib cage. So this is how these muscles are attached. They are called phrenic muscles or radial muscles. Intercoastal muscles are present between the ribs. We have 12 pairs of ribs. And between these 12 pairs of ribs, there are 11 pairs of these external intercoastal 
muscles. So if we draw the ribs here, say this is a rib here, another rib here. So between the ribs are present these external intercoastal muscles. So between 12 pairs, there would be 11 pairs of these intercoastal muscles and the muscles which are attached to the diaphragm, they are radial or phrenic muscles. Now let us see what happens when these muscles contract. We are talking of inhalation or expiration, oh, sorry, inhalation or inspiration and we said it is active. So it is because of the contraction of these muscles, this inhalation takes place. The thoracic cavity is a tight uh, compartment. On the side, there are rib cages. So the rib cage is like this and below the rib cage is the diaphragm. When these phrenic muscles contract, this diaphragm, which is dome shaped, because it is getting pulled from the sides, it becomes flat. And as it becomes flat, the volume of the thoracic cavity would increase. Again, if we draw the same diagram, then the rib cage and this is the original position of the diaphragm. Due to contraction of these muscles, this diaphragm now becomes flat. As a result, the thoracic cavity's volume increases. So here if we write the steps, contraction of phrenic muscles. This results in making the diaphragm flat. Diaphragm gets flat. Now as diaphragm gets flat, the volume of thoracic cavity increases. This is one change. Then the intercoastal muscles. We said they are between the ribs. Again, if this is the rib cage and if these muscles contract which are between the ribs, the rib cage moves up and out. So the rib cage is going to move up and out. It is going to go up and out. Again, this would also result in increase in thoracic cavity. So this is number one. Number two is contraction of external inter coastal muscles. What does it cause? It causes rib cage to move up and out. Again, one more time what exactly is happening. Diaphragm is dome shaped. On the periphery of the diaphragm are attached the phrenic or the radial muscles. When these muscles contract, diaphragm becomes flat. And as diaphragm becomes flat, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases. Then, second thing, contraction of external intercoastal muscles, which are between the ribs. So again, when these muscles contract the rib cage, it moves up and out. So when it moves up and out, again, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases. So, Contraction of the muscles of the diaphragm and the external intercoastal muscles both result in increase in the volume of thoracic cavity. It has increased. And we know when volume increases, the pressure decreases. And here the pressure inside the lungs decreases by minus 2 to minus 6 as compared to, this is millimeters of mercury, as compared to the atmospheric pressure. That means there is a negative pressure generated. So pressure decreases and we can say uh, here there is a negative pressure. And air moves from higher pressure to lower pressure. So if we compare these two areas, that is atmosphere and within the lung. Within the lung, there is a negative pressure which is generated. And negative pressure is like suction. So the air from the atmosphere is taken in or it is sucked in. So because of this, air from higher pressure, that is atmosphere, moves to lower pressure. 
pressure. That is the lungs. And this process is inhalation. Both the muscles are contracting. The muscles of the diaphragm, that is phrenic muscles and radial muscles and external intercostal muscles. Both are contracting. That means ATP is required and that is why this process is active. Contraction of both the muscles results in common change. The changes increase in thoracic volume. Because of this increase, the pressure inside the lungs decreases by minus 2 to minus 6 as compared to the atmospheric pressure. And we call it a negative pressure generated. And that is responsible for movement of air from higher pressure, that is from the atmosphere to the lower pressure, that is to the lungs. And that process is known as inhalation. The second process is exhalation and we have written that this is passive. Now what and we are talking about the normal breathing, forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation we will take up separately. So here passive that means no muscle is contracting. On the contrary all these muscles are going to relax. So when the radial muscles they relax, the diaphragm has is flat because of their contraction. Now the muscles, they relax. So the diaphragm becomes dome-shaped. Again, if it becomes dome-shaped, the volume of the thoracic cavity is going to decrease. When inter, uh, external intercostal muscles relax, the ribcage which was up and out comes back to its normal position. So ribcage is coming back. The diaphragm which was flat is again becoming dome-shaped. That means the reverse of this. So what has happened in inhalation? I'm showing the arrow in red inhalation. The rib cage moves out and the diaphragm becomes flat. That was responsible for increasing thoracic volume. Now muscles are going to relax. So the rib cage is going to come back to its original position and the diaphragm is also going to come back to its original position. So what is happening in exhalation? Both the muscles are getting relaxed due to which the volume of the thoracic cavity decreases. This would result in increase in pressure. Where is the pressure high now? In the lungs. So from higher pressure, that is from the lungs, the air is going to move out. That is exhalation. And here there is no muscle contraction. And that is why this is known as a passive movement. So if we have to write about exhalation, we can just simply write few things that is in exhalation muscles relax. Due to relaxation volume of thoracic cavity decreases. Volume decreases means pressure increases and the air moves from Higher pressure that is lungs to lower pressure that is atmosphere and this is known as exhalation. So in normal breathing inhalation two main muscles which are required, the diaphragm and its muscles, that is phrenic and radial and external intercostal muscles. Both when contract result in change in the volume of the thoracic cavity. The volume increases, pressure within the lungs decreases and air run, uh, moves from higher pressure that is atmosphere to lungs, inhalation. Muscle contraction is taking place so this process is active. When the same muscles relax, that time the thoracic cavity's volume would decrease, pressure would increase and higher pressure that is from lungs, the air is going to move out into the atmosphere. This is what happens in normal breathing. Now, next we will take up 